Rav Aaron Lankri is the Rav of Chesed Avram in Brooklyn and Ar HaChaim in Muncie, a.k.a. Shiners. He joins us to discuss a very important matter, an incident which took place in Rabbi Lankri's Flatbush Shul in which a Ben Teira, a person by all accounts who's a very, very good person, was falsely accused of trying to abduct a nine-year-old boy and the story got widespread. And we are here to clear the record and to clarify a lot of details. Uh, Rav Lankri, thank you so much for being here. So, Shalom Aleichem. Uh, um, I, I forgot your name. Aleichem, Shalom. Yaakov. Yaakov. Aaron Lankri. Right. So, first of all, uh, the, it's called Beis Medrash or Chaim. It's not, it's named after a blazer shiner, Zayda. And um, it's not Or HaChaim, because that would be a, a different person. Oh, and, okay. I never do that. Thank you for clarifying yeah. that. Okay. Yeah, yes, yes. Sir. A blazer is, uh, okay, he doesn't like when we talk about him, so we won't. Okay, moving right along. Um, the sequence of events are like this. There was a bris mila in the shul in Brooklyn. And there were many people. You met people inside the shul, outside the shul. And at some point in time, there was a commotion. The commotion led to the coming of police. The commotion led to phone calls to me. Uh, to respond to what was going on. And there was a claim by a relative of this boy that someone attempted to abduct a child. And there was a, a description from which location to what location the, the attempt took place. Um, in response to, to the witnesses at the location, um, initially, there was uh, a statement made by me. For those that didn't understand the statement, it was a recommendation to everybody that no matter um, what a person looks like, no matter how from he looks, whatnot, you always need to be careful. I think Am Yisrael went through a, a very significant disaster in B'nai Brak, where many, many people were hurt by a very prominent Kaviyocho, a member of the civilization, and stories are, that have been coming out from there are, are heartbroken. And, um, and therefore, I think people are very, very cautious and very, very hypersensitive to, uh, to the different challenges. And um, it's funny because when I was younger, I come out, never knew, uh, I didn't have a friend in high school that went for therapy. No one even, what's that? If someone said that he goes to a, a therapist, we thought he was in Michigan and we all stayed away. Today, if a kid doesn't have multiple therapists, it's, it's a problem. Um, times have changed. We right. have organizations that, that are dealing specifically with, with abuse, trauma. And these organizations have many tens of people that are involved just in the recommendation of what kind of treatment these people should get. And the horror stories that are coming in are not not one a day, but ten a day. So I think, you know, in Bayez HaShem, or Mace, there's no house that has not been traumatized or hurt by some of the, the challenges that have become this generation. Right, and therefore, my recommendation from being in the Rabbanus and hearing from Rav Tzvi Glog, from Rav Avi Khan, and from other the Askanim Rabbanim that are involved in mental health is that there's a lot of caution that needs to be taken. And without making any accusations at the time, I did not accuse that younger man. On the contrary, I called different Askanim. And uh, I made it clear to them that this younger man needs a lawyer very fast because even a benign statement when a person has the right to remain silent could be turned and twisted against him and they could profile him and they, they could just make his life miserable. It's true. That's very important advice. And therefore, therefore, I, I, I called one of my lifelong friends who's a 
a very big Askin. He probably doesn't want his name. And immediately they got a lawyer. Um, and at the same time, I was working on getting the actual video. Uh, there's a, a kind gentleman that put up the, the system. His name is Charlie Frima he, in, in our shul. And as soon as he had the, the video, he shared it to me. But before he shared it with me, I started getting some negative feedback to which I made a release to New York Post that uh, essentially gave, uh, you know, innocent and proven guilty for those of you that saw the post. Let's not jump to conclusions. Let's let's figure this out. Yeah, let's I, I saw your you on the video of the post, and you were extremely even handed. I thought it was very very fair. Yeah. So for some reason, there there are people that that kind of I don't know what they heard or what they saw, but they they kind of think that I I took a position to incriminate this guy. I have I have no reason to incriminate him or whatnot. And, and just not- to interject for a second, there was an organization that protects a, a, a abused children, and they spoke out against you, saying that you were too focused on exonerating the the accused. And I I thought that was oh, you know, I'm, I'm totally out of. No, I'm not familiar with that. What the statement of that organization was, but I yeah. just when I immediately gave that statement to to the post after the the first statement that was done through I don't know which which NBC or something. Right. Where I felt that people are, are like, you know, they're already hanging this guy. I said, one second, he never had his day in court. He never had his chance. And then when I finally got the video, we could not release the video to the public because uh, the Askanim and the lawyers at the time felt that it would be pre- too premature. And and actually, Charlie Fima, when he revealed the recording to the police, he said to them, this doesn't look like an abduction at all. Not at all. Not I at saw all. the video. Yeah, there's, not, there's no abduction here. So at that point, I shared it with uh, a very hush of a family, the mamish, tremendous people, and they and I, uh, we hustled through the night to, to try to make sure that the this younger man gets the best possible defense and for people to speak to the family. Um, the family doesn't have to explain why they felt what they felt. An emotion is not an intellect. And if the, a mother feels that her child is sakana and she wants to react a certain way, it's totally fine. Yeah. Whether and, and, her and, and, right or wrong, it, Baruch Hashem, it, it, it was benign, but a mama is entitled to overreact when she feels possibly that her uh, child is kind of, which, yeah, which is... Er, er, erring on the side of caution, there was contact that was made. She saw that it was yeah. a stranger. I hope we would all respond the way she responded with that well, vigilance. Well, it, well, I mean, oh. Kaverim or, or a Flatbush came, the police came, Detectives came, SWAT team came. The 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 end of the everybody. Came. You're saying it may have been overreaction. Okay, I hear what you're saying. Reaction, but we don't want it to be considered an overreaction because if it would be a real case, right, we want the same reaction. So, Thank you for clarifying that. So I I don't I'm I'm not I'm not belittling anybody's reaction. I'm just saying an emotion is not is not something that that needs to be explained. A mama felt something. She's entitled to feel what she wants. And she's entitled to scream, and if and if her and her screams are heard, and she wants to, to to evoke, it's it's, it it is what it is, right? I I think part of the lesson, and I, I called the other rabbanim in, in our shul, right? Because after seeing the video, to me it was clear that this young man is a tzaddik, and just like the hanhaga of 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 Hoshua people, they don't want to walk between two women. Right, you know, it, it, stam, according to Pnimi, is this there if a if a lady is in a matzah of Rukhule, then um, then it's a sakaras nafashis for the person that passes between two. So there's an eitzah. You walk two people together. Yeah. Right? This yeah. is what the younger man was implied it was doing. 
right? Yeah. But it still teaches us a lesson. Find an adult. Don't ask a kid. It, it's come a point in time, you know, if I can tell you how much patch I got as a kid being in, in yeshiva, you know, if one of my rabbin were, were teaching today, why they? I don't yeah. resent them. I love them. But at, yeah. the end of it, at the end of the day, we're living in different times. Yeah, I want to focus on that for a moment and ask you. I was a tutor. I know you do a lot of counseling. And uh, isn't it just the most responsible thing at this point that always be in public, uh, you know, n and just never make any kind of physical contact, even the most innocuous, because be yeah. it's it's just the safest way to go. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. I, in, in my shul, we have many, many different rabbanim, and very chashiv, and one of them is Rav Dani Koren, and you know, we we had implemented the, um, a strategy back in the day. Um, let the men teach the men, let the women teach the women. And that's it. And except for the except for one of the Rabbanim who is older and, and and whatnot, he he gives a class to women, but in general, women teach women. Yeah. Teach men. That's and that's that's just where yeah. we are. Now let me yeah. ask you sorry to if I'm interrupting, just uh, back to the oh continue, sorry. Yes. I was Got the video. I immediately sent it to very hush of Askanim. If I had the consent to share their name, I gladly would. I don't. And, and because he was actually my roommate in BMG, I know he's the type of guy that's Hatsne Aleches and he's still eight and he just doesn't want to leave me alone. You know what I'm saying? He gets sure. the job done. And yeah, I met other Askanim last night. There was a very large wedding of uh, in. In, in New Jersey, I met other Askanim. I shared with them the video, and they immediately went to work. So through the night, many different Askanim, with, without taking the video public, saw the video. I didn't forward it to them. Saw the video, and they were from the Sephardic Kehila. There were, there were different Askanim that went to sit with the family to discuss I don't know if the family actually saw the video or whatnot. And therefore, we had very positive results today. Hayatza Mikolza, right, is, you know, in, in my show, we're going to implement that in the hallway, if there's a simcha, not in the main show. Of course, in the main show, there's a machita, But in the entrance, we're going to implement, spoke to the Rabbanu, we're going to implement a mechitza, men on one side, men on the other side, and it's it's not because uh, you know there's families, and it's because of this incident, right? There are people that want that want to be noyeg according to halacha, and it shouldn't be inconvenience for them, and it shouldn't ever come to such a matzah. And I think I think this is a, a very tr a tremendous learning lesson for all of us, as far as yeah. the people that jump to conclusions. Uh, you know, I want to done them the kapsos because we 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 have been beat up, you know, in the past ten years with cases that are that are terrible, and um, yeah, we all need mashiach. To, we have to we to have run. to be very cautious. Obviously, nobody wants to diminish in any way the risk, the dangers. The sakana said they're, they're out there. And, and I, I would reiterate, you know, you can have a person that, that looks as from as anybody else, and he could be a, a predator. Yeah. Now, and, and tell kids, don't go into a car with somebody. I'll tell kids, like, you know, be cautious. You know, don't go places that you don't know somebody. And, re and report anything strange to parents, even if it, you know, if it feels oh, unusual. If they're I always tell my kids. That if somebody threatens you and says that and if you don't, I'm gonna kill your father or kill your mother. I always tell my kids, don't worry, I have bigger knives. <laughs> Excellent. So right? crucial. Don't be scared, don't be intimidated by by an adult. Tell the children not to be fearful. If someone intimidates you, immediately report it. Now, just to so, clarify, 
if I can, uh, about the incident, because there's conflicting reports. Were there any other videos that you're aware of? Because supposedly there were stories about how he put the kid on his shoulders. A lot of very strange claims were made that, that were completely false. A and also, I'm curious if the parents are, dropped all the charges, because there are conflicting reports about that as well. I don't know if you know. I, I understand, and I don't know, because I was not in the police station. I understand that some of the charges were dropped, but again, um, certain charges, it's not up to the parents to drop. It's up to the uh, law yeah. enforcement. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and I think, I think as the, the, the video of what actually occurred in, in this four second process, or maybe it was five seconds, uh, the, as it becomes more well known, it just is, you know, we don't hear the words that he says, but we see the the body language. And as soon as he reached the point where there were no more women, he he steps aside and he leaves. He didn't run. He didn't grab. He didn't lift. He didn't. Yeah, all all those claims were totally false. It's it's shame because not the Jewish, but the non-Jewish media did put out yeah. his picture, did put out his name. I I hope he doesn't have any sort of you know, suffering or his family as a result. Well, we do have upcoming interviews with NBC and The Post. Now, will they, again, will they actually report, will they actually take this? Like, because no one wants to be the bearer of no news. The idea is to to be the bearer of news. Oh, it, oh, it wasn't true. Then, then they all look yeah. like... Yeah, they want it to be juicy. Okay. They want it to be juicy. And, and that's why I think, you know, people that are in the news industry, how come there's no news station that shares positive news? Yeah. It's just, wow, no news. What, are we all so negative? Don't we all want to hear something positive about what somebody else did? Positive news. Anyway, Chad, Sadik, so in, in, in closing, I just want to convey that, that you know, in rabbinical leadership, we have an obligation to constantly work both sides of the coin. We have to be, we have to listen to the victim, and have to understand also that there's a possibility that the perpetrator is also a victim, right? And I really so appreciative that you're sharing that message and giving 100%. us that clarity. And and my one final question: Have you had any contact? with the actual person who was accused or with his family? The, the No, I, I don't even know his name. <laughs> I have contact. But I, I understand he learns in one of the credulent in my shul. And I'm looking and, forward to meeting him in person. And, and yet you've done so much, you know, obviously to benefit them. And it's, it sounds like you really, really, your intervention was, was heroic. I hope, I hope so. I hope so. I, I, I don't want to take the credit. The credit were the askanim that worked through the night. Uh, the, the, I tried to feed them with the best information that I can, um, and uh, we worked the late hours in the night, sharing, caring, and doing the best we can to to help this fantastic kid. Okay. But it, the initial message clear. The initial message is, Rabbi Sai, children, hands off. Doesn't matter what. There's no justification to put your hand on a child, even for a shalom aleichem. Nothing. Nothing. It's just not worth it. It's not worth it. I know. I know rebellion that that would like to give a ah a geschmack a knip to a kid. They they're scared to. They can get into a lawsuit. I mean, it's just a hands-off policy. Yes. Give a candy. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, thank you so much, Ravar and Lankri. It's a shame that we came to this stage. Yeah. But it's, uh, it, it is what it is. So, as a clear statement, everybody has, to some level, a form of justification. The mother is entitled to have her emotions expressed if she feels that something's going wrong with her son. And, and no mother should hesitate. Right? Whether... It's correct or incorrect. An emotion is an emotion. It's not an intellectual. 
and therefore she I can't say she's wrong for well, we see that that the reality is different but uh, you know there's a famous story about a person is walking into an apartment building and they pass by a house and they hear screams and moaning and stuff and he peeps through the people and he sees one person on top of another person and he says Shreklech Shreklech one guy is killing the other guy so he calls the police they bash down the door and lo and behold there's a masseuse giving someone a massage <laughs> when you're looking through a small hall you don't see the full picture Right, and sometimes you can only deal with what you do see. And as you investigate and you keep your mind open, you can see a bigger picture. When the, this process initiated, there was te- there was testimony of like what you heard, but we still kept an open mind. We never incriminated anybody, and never at any given point time. Yes, we did give recommendations that no matter how firm a person may look. We've seen many from people, lo aleinu, right, that have expressed uh, the contrary hanhaga, and um, and we're jaded and we're hurt. And if you're not sure about that, you can call Tzvi Glock, Rabbi Tzvi Glock. If you're not sure about that, you can call Rabbi Avi Khan. They'll tell you story after story. Yeah. Testimony does. Okay, Rav Lankri, thank you so much for... Bat Glocha, Koltov. For joining us, Rav Aaron Lankry, Rav Chesel Avram, and Rav Orchayim on the oh, Vin Podcast. Oh.